What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today, again, it's Monday. We got another Glassnodes Insight, week 31. Let's check it out. What's happening with Bitcoin and all the on-chain analysis? Before we get any further, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Thank you to all those who have. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up, okay? Um, also, uh, come follow me over on library as well. The link is down in the description of the video. Um, as well, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, my one request is that you please be civil in your discourse. Kindness and compassion are absolutely free. And if we just take a moment to edit our responses, our commentary, our thoughts through those filters, we can all make the world a better place. Let's get it. All right. The week on chain, week 31 of 2021, as the Bitcoin market rallies over $42,000, we analyze the spending and accumulation behavior of entities on chain. Does that picture look so peaceful? Yeah. The Bitcoin market has rallied strongly this week, adding to the gains of the short squeeze starting on Monday morning. The market opened at the weekly lows of 35,326 and reached an intraday high of 42,388. This provided some welcome position, uh, welcomed positive price action after months of consolidation and multiple retest tests of the 29K floor. In this edition, we assess how the market has reacted to this first set of strong green candles for some time. We analyze the magnitude of uh, profit taking and how accumulation and spending behavior is manifesting on chain. Look at that. Remember, we were in. If you've been following these uh, these these videos here and the, and the the glass nodes insights, it was getting really boring down here, right? And then pow 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 pow. Um, so disbelief or bear relief rally. After an extended period of time, a period of very negative sentiment and sustained downwards price action, Bitcoin has traded high with gusto this week. A key question is whether this is a disbelief rally where everyone doubts the new bull trend uh, or simply a bearish relief rally in a larger time frame downtrend. To start our assessment, we look to the realized profit and loss on chain. We can see that after a long period of elevated losses being realized in May to July, this is shown in pink. Uh, this week, over two billion in profits were realized on chain, the seven day median. This suggests there is some portion of the market who spent their profitable coins, potentially taking exit liquidity. A lot of realized profits. <laughs> okay. The ASOPR metric provides a view of realized profit loss uh, by the aggregate market. Ignoring coins younger than one hour, we can see that on net, the majority of on-chain spending have realized losses since the sell-off in May. Each time price rallied, traders spent their coins, making an ASOPR value of one act as resistance. This week, the ASOPR has rallied significantly higher as profits were realized on chain. Key observations to keep an eye on for here are the ASOPR, ASOPR represents uh, resent, resents to one and then bounces higher. This indicates the market has stopped realizing profits, holding conviction remains, and absorbed the uh, sell pressure, which would be disbelief. The ASOPR falls back below one and stays there. This indicates the market again is realizing losses and was unable to absorb sell side pressure, bearish relief. Here in this chart, we can see the different areas where there's capitulation and market reabsorbing. Okay. We got a little bit of absorption. We went down below and now we're back to absorption. We have established that some volume of profitable coins were spent on chain. We can look to assess which cohort of holders these coins may have been sourced from. 
If we assess old coins greater than a year in the spent output age bands, we can see that there have been four distinct phases of this market cycle. One, bull market distribution in late 2020 to Q1 of 2021, as older coins were spent at an accelerating rate. Top formation, with slowing distribution from May or sorry, with slowing distribution from February to May 2021. Capitulation and risk off. In May and June, as the markets reacted to the unprecedented FUD and a 50% sell-off to 29K. Disbelief or bearish relief as number four. Through late July, as the market traded down to 29K and then strongly up to 42K this week. An ideal bullish scenario, older coins will remain fairly dormant, spending will remain low and decline or decline, and conviction to hold stays strong. If older coins do start spending, but prices continue to rally, this would indicate a bullish disbelief rally may be in play, and the market is absorbing the spent supply. Conversely, sharp upticks in older coin spending, especially alongside weakening prices, might start to lean closer to a resumption of the bearish trend. It would suggest the market is struggling to absorb the spent supply. The realized cap hodl waves filtered for young coins less than a week provided us with the other side of this equation. Typical behavior of a bull market is older coins are spent to take profits. New investors that uh, new investors them then and the young uh, coin supply increases. Eventually, the market cannot absorb any more supply and rolls over into a bear market. As speculators leave and smart money accumulate, the population of young coins decline as more move into cold storage. Eventually, young coin supply collapses after a capitulation event and massive accumulation takes hold. Very often, as the market rallies out of this capitulation bottom or starts a bull market with a series of disbelief rally, a disbelief relief rallies, which is in purple down below, uh, older coins are spent into the rally and take exit liquidity, increasing the young coin supply age, uh, sorry, supply again. This week, we have seen a notable spike in these younger coins out of what resembles a capitulation bottom. In a bullish scenario, this would subside hodling dominance and or price continues higher in spite of it uh, disbelief absorbing the sell side. In a more bearish scenario, it starts an uptrend of new young coin supply, suggesting weakened conviction to hold the asset by old hands and increasing liquid supply. At this reaccumulation period, let's see if we let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Still seems a little early, but let's see, let's see what we got. Lastly, on the spending front, we revisit miners who fall into two groups: offline miners impacted by the migration uh, out of China and incurring large costs; online miners who are operating at high profitability due to around half of the competition being offline. The net transfer volume from miners to exchange bottomed out at less than 100 BTC per day in mid uh, to late July. This week, however, we have seen an increase of around 300 BTC per day, which is a 3x increase from the July lows. Keep in mind that this is still in line with typical behavior throughout 2020 and 2021. It does not re reflect the resilience of the Bitcoin mining market whereby Half of the miners may add to sell pressure out of necessity, while the other half can accumulate at twice the rate. So we have seen sell off, okay? But not like we did in January, March, and then April, boom. Uh, sorry, March, a little bit of April. But this was the big sell off right here for miners. Which is kind of why if they did take profits up here, they probably can last a little bit longer, but it's a matter of time before they get reset up. So we have exchange supply falls. So far, we have looked at spending behavior in response to positive price action to build up conviction and a thesis behind the flow of supply out of uh, exchanges and into on-chain wallets. The exchange net positive change metric maps out the monthly rate of coins flowing in green or out of as red of all exchanges. This week we have seen an extremely large volume of coins flow out of exchanges comparable to the peak outflow seen in November of 2020. 
the rate hit this week was over 100,000 BTC per month in outflows. Hmm. In terms of the aggregate balance still held on, held on exchanges, exchange holdings now have returned to the 2021 lows of 13.2% of circulating supply. This represents a near full retracement of the significant inflow volume observed during the May sell-off. Pretty low balance. Pretty low. Another interesting dynamic this week is the interplay between coins held on Coinbase and Binance. The two largest exchanges by balance, Coinbase saw significant outflows throughout most of 2021, while Binance was the largest recipient. The trend for Binance appears to have stalled and started to reverse, with a total outflow of approximately 37,500 uh, BTC this week. Coinbase balances plateaued in June, saw a large deposit of around 30,000 BTC in mid-July, and this week an outflow of 31,000 BTC. This has largely unwound all inflows since mid-May. Overall, this may well be the start of another era of net exchange outflows and is a trend to watch. Now, let's see. They're not really mentioning this, but this also is in alignment with uh, Binance uh, uh, making some announcements about... Um, Non-KYC accounts are going to be limited to like 0.03 Bitcoin out per day, which was way different than the two Bitcoin that we used to have. And then it got moved down to like a half a Bitcoin. So, um, yeah, could be just people going, I'm looking for greener pastures to park stuff. So I don't want to get stuck somehow. Um, the macro sentiment. To provide a macro overview of supply dynamics on chain, we can consult the liveliness metric in both standard and entity adjusted forms. Liveliness has the following properties. Uptrends, when more coins when more coin days are destroyed than created, old coin spending. Downtrends, when accumulation and dormancy dominate the toddling. Entity adjustment, corrects for internal self spends or non-economic transactions. We can see in the chart below that the market has returned to macro accumulation almost immediately after the May sell-off. Recently, the standard liveliness metric jumped significantly higher, suggesting that a potentially larger volume of old coins were spent. However, the entity-adjusted version does not see the same event, which indicates these coins are classified as internal and likely to be reshuffling at an exchange cold out of an reshuffling of an exchange cold wallet. As such, it seems that hodling and accumulation is a most likely dominant trend in the on-chain uh, market. The realized cap hodl waves tell a similar story with a distinctive uptrend in coin maturation for coins older than three months. This has similar harm hallmarks to accumulation after a blow-off top, although 2021 is coming from a higher hodl uh, base of around 25% than 2018 at 15%. Positive peaks of these bands would provide an indication of the volume of coins that are maturing, higher peaks more bullish, and vice versa. Keep in mind that while, while accumulation and coin maturation is bullish, as can be seen in the 2018 to 2020 market, the full-scale bullish impulse can take some time to develop. We can also look to the holdings of on-chain entities Defined as clusters of addresses with the same owner. By far, the largest accumulators since the sell-off in May are the shrimp to crab cohorts holding less than 10 BTC. These small holders now own an all-time high of 13.8% of the total cone supply, with the trend of accumulation clearly accelerating from May onwards. <clears throat> A particular note are the 1 to 10 BTC cohorts, uh, the bottom light green, which distributed since January have returned to accumulation mode. As a final closing note, there continues to be historically low activity on chain. The current entity adjusted transaction count remains down 38% from the peak set in February, currently clocking 200,000 transactions a day. While on-chain activity can often follow positive price action, current levels are equivalent to the 2018 to 2019 uh, capitulation bottom. 
That said, transaction volumes are, are spiking higher, up 94% from the lows of a $4.7 billion per day to around $9.1 billion per day. This suggests that uh, suggests a demand for on-chain block space is likely dominated by fewer. But larger size transactions are at present and is uh, an interesting combination of indicators worth keeping an eye on. Very interesting. So it looks like uh, lots of volume is moving, but it's not a lot of people. That's what that was just kind of saying. So um, overall, it still could take time for things to pick up. So we shall wait and see. Tune in next week for week 32 when we go over what happened this week. All right, everybody. I love you. Thank you so much. Be sure to share this with a friend and stay cool. Love you. Peace.